But as we can see, the oil markets are pulling back a bit this morning. Um, Pippa just mentioned a city note that said it was already priced in. I was here with Emrita Sen from Energy Aspect saying something very similar here in Europe. What's your take on what we're seeing? So I would agree with that statement. And, and the way that I come to that conclusion isn't just in the price action we're seeing today, but the lead up that we saw last week. The rise in crude actually wasn't that extreme last week, but if you look under the surface, what you saw was exploding call option volume, which told me investors were very much positioning for this tail event. We saw options trade 90, 95, 100, 110, 120. And in, in, in what investors were telling us is we don't necessarily think crude is going to explode higher um, on this event. But in case it does, and in case this does escalate, we want to have that tail hedged. Now that this is unfolded and there's a little bit more clarity, and clearly there's a lot to learn here, I think we might be seeing some unwinding of those tail hedges that were put on as the path to seeing a supply disruption in crude, which is different than further ex escalation, is not as likely as some had feared. Okay. So I, I want to get an explanation from you. Uh, we keep saying that the uh, risk premium in the energy market declined after this. But just last week, the IEA came out with a report citing escalating oil supply security concerns. You've mentioned the word escalating several times. Why isn't that risk premium higher considering that this event could, you know, extend to something much broader? And we still don't know what Israel is going to do in response or if they will do something in response at all. So I think there's two, two answers to that question. The first is that we have a tremendous amount of spare capacity from OPEC and OPEC Plus sitting on the sidelines, which is providing an exceptional amount of buffer to the upside risk premium being priced in. Right now, OPEC Plus has 5 million barrels plus of spare capacity that it can bring back if needed to offset a price spike. And my thoughts are that they are likely to bring that back in the event that crude gets towards $100 a barrel, because their long-term objective, although they like higher prices, is not to see a spike. They want consistent, non-volatile markets in order to contain these prices okay. and maintain their control over the market. So, Rebecca, I want to ask you, uh, in your notes here, you say that any sell-off where Brent gets down to $80 a barrel, WTI gets down to 75 that would be a buying opportunity, but wouldn't that signal weak demand if we see prices fall there that low? I actually think we could see prices fall to those levels if we get a ceasefire and we get a true de-escalation. I think that's how much risk premium is actually kind of priced into the market at this point. Um, so I think fundamentally, if we're looking at, you know, kind of $80 Brent, um, that's where the fundamentals really start to look solid and where crude is supported. So that's an obvious amount of massive amount of de-escalation that would that would come following um, what Israel decides to do. And I think that's truly where if the buying opportunity exists. Supply and demand does look strong, but it doesn't look strong enough to support Brent at 90.